My name is David Zimmel and I'm the host of Shades of Havana. We're filming at The Perfect Ash in Colts Neck, New Jersey. The Perfect Ash was founded in March 2020 and we're excited to be here. It's great to be back, seeing faces, meeting all new people, enjoying a cigar, cocktail if preferred, and having good conversation. Before we get started, I would like to share that Shades of Havana will be traveling out on the road. We're here with uh, George Minzella, special guest host Nick Foster, and Mike Mazza. Why don't you guys introduce yourself and let us know what you're smoking. I'm smoking a San Cristobal uh, cigar. I like the ring gauge. Uh, so guys, why don't you introduce yourself and let us know what you're smoking. Well, how's it going? I'm Nick Foster, uh, like David said, and uh, I am smoking a Casa Cuba uh, by Fuente. Uh, and uh, if you like that ring gauge, that's the San Cristobal Papagayo XXL. That's rolled by Don Pepin Garcia from My Father Cigars, specifically for Ashton Cigars. So look for that where they oh, sell okay. Ashton. Very yeah. good. All right, uh, I'm George Manzella. I'm a writer for Cigar Journal Magazine. Uh, we're an international magazine published in uh, four different languages. Uh, we're the only international uh, cigar magazine. Um, and I'm also a sales rep for DBL Cigars. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm smoking right here. A brand new El Final, as we call it, from DBL Cigars. We're a Dominican company. Uh, we're actually going to be releasing this this weekend in Las Vegas at the um, trade show uh, in Vegas this weekend. So it's our new release. We're going to start shipping it uh, immediately. Is it a? Um, is it, it looks like it's a, it's on the stronger side. This one here is a Maduro, so it's a, it's a medium, upper upper medium, not quite full. Um, we also have it in a Cameroon and um, a Connecticut wrapper as well. But this one in particular is a San Andreas Mexican Maduro wrapper. All right, so I guess it's my turn. I'm Mike Maz. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm an actor, FX makeup artist, pretty much jack of all trades. Not really a big cigar smoker. I'll smoke cigarettes every now and then. That's about it. And you, uh, what's, your, what's your main thing that you- Acting. That, acting. Yes. Any yes. famous movies? Uh, I did a movie called Love Dave. It was an independent film. That's on Amazon Prime right now. I have my own TV series called Tracking the Paranormal. It's a you know a paranormal show. Uh, I just got cast for a uh, new TV series called Vigilante. It's like a superhero type cool. show. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, That's cool. That's very good. Exciting. Very good. Thank you. So you know we we're, we're we're not out of COVID yet. I wish we were out of COVID, but we're we're getting. I think we're getting a little better. Although. Just today, I heard about a whole family that just came down with COVID. No so I don't think it's, a, it's thought, gone yet. But thought, thought we were out of it, I guess. Yeah, no, we're not out of it yet. But uh, where did you guys, um, I mean, Nick, you own the store. So I don't know if, I, if I've asked you this before. You didn't close, did you close it all during COVID? Yeah, our Asbury store was closed. Um, you know, Belmar, we did a lot of uh, just come up to the table across the front of the store. Um, so I was working from home at the time. So I just worked from the store. If somebody wandered by, I sold them something over the table or put it in the trunk of their car, uh, and that's where I smoked. And so we're, we're mainly, I mean, I know like myself, uh, you know, especially during the winter, I like to go to a, a, you know, a cigar lounge and, and hang out. Um, in the summertime, you know, it's easier to smoke outside. Where did you guys go? Um, I mean, you didn't, you're not a big cigar smoker, so not sure that you went anywhere. <laughs> but where did you go uh, to have your cigars? Uh, well, I'm lucky. I have in my backyard, I built a uh, cigar lounge. You know, I have a shed, a detached shed in the backyard. And this was, I built this about 10 years ago before COVID, so I was, I was ready. Um, you were all and, stocked uh, up. <laughs> yeah, I turned a shed that I really wasn't using, it was a large one too, into a cigar lounge. A bar, sofa, TV, fireplace for the winter. It was a nice fireplace. How many people does it hold? Um, I have, I've had 12 people in there really? We're playing card games and smoking. Cool. So that kind of was, was that. What about was, uh, any was, ventilation? Yeah. So in the roof, I put uh, an attic fan. So you flick on the switch and it just sucks everything out. And it, and it does uh, a good job. It was perfect. Yeah, it was great. So that's where I was. You know, so in the colder days, I was inside there. And the outer days, I was, in the warmer days, I was outside. Nick, I mean, have you found that uh, as we're hopefully coming out of the main COVID era, uh, you're back to normal with people coming in, or do you think people are still not coming in like they used to? I mean, I think more people were smoking cigars over COVID because everybody's working from home. So, yeah. you know, liquor sales were up, cigar sales were up because everybody's sitting on the deck with the laptop. And uh, I think it's uh, a lot, some of that has carried over. And so I think sales have stayed up. And uh, what about people visiting the lounge itself? Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, in the business, it's interesting. You know, you, the lounge, you'll see a lot of the same people coming in day after day. Um, it's more that grab and go business that is the barometer of how well the industry is doing in general, you know, because a guy comes in, say he comes in three times a week, buys a $15 cigar, but there's guys who come in twice a week that buy $200 worth of cigars and never sit down. So you, you want that grab and go business and that kind of feeds, keeps the lights on and, and helps you have the lounge there so that people can come in and enjoy it. But it's a lot of the same faces in the lounge. You know, it, it's Ones and twosies as opposed to a box. It's funny, when COVID first started, I was you know, really afraid to go into a cigar lounge because the thought I said to myself, People blowing out of their mouth, yeah. smoke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the like complete but, opposite. Of but the funny said. thing is, is that I, I I didn't really hear of any cases where people thought they actually got COVID in a cigar mm. lounge. So it's pretty interesting. When there, they said a report too, tobacco smoke was actually keeping COVID away. People yeah. that smoke tobacco. Is that right? Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're looking really? into the tobacco as a medicinal. Yeah, yeah they said it's cigarette medicinal. smokers and cigar smokers were less likely to get COVID. Yeah, oh, something, wow. something yeah. in the tobacco is. I mean, I didn't now, get was it. Was that factual? I'm not sure. I didn't get it till like the end. Yeah. The whole time I didn't get it at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah did, no. you, did you guys have COVID or? Yeah, but I had it this past November. Thanksgiving. So yeah, I had it. Same yeah. thing. I had it yep. later on in the when the big. I had it back was, in yeah. uh, two, 2020. I actually uh, um, was in a meeting, and uh, someone called me up and said, uh, "I just want to let you know, so and so, I was exposed, and I didn't think anything of it, and uh, like four days, five days later, I started feeling like crap, yeah. and I went and got tested, and sure enough, I was." Positive, but I ended up getting the monoclonal antibodies. I went okay. to the hospital, and and literally, it was amazing. 24 hours, I was a different person. No kidding. Mm. Yeah, it was really amazing. Yeah, I, I had very few symptoms when I had it. The only reason I even got tested, I had a stuffy nose. And I was going to a wake. This was on Sunday. I was going to a wake on Wednesday. Tuesday, I still didn't feel well. I was like, you know what? Give me a wake. Some you know, a lot of elderly people in the small little room. They go get tested, and sure enough, it was positive. And wow. all I had was a stuffy nose. And if it wasn't for that wake, I probably wouldn't even want to get tested. Well, and the amazing thing is, if you went to the wake, there probably would have been another 20, 30 people that, in, in that coffin. Yeah, right. who knows? Yeah, that's why <laughs> right. I said, you know, I was like, you know what? Let me go get tested. And so you know, I've been seeing a lot on TV about the um, airline industry. It seems like it's uh, it's a mess. I mean, you know, with all these cancellation of flights. Uh, it, it seems like it's a circus in the airports. Uh, you know, what do you guys think about that? Um, I'm actually worried about that. Cause Friday, like I said, we're, we're leaving for Vegas for oh. the trade show, and we're on a time crunch. You know, we're here about cancellations, delays. What airline? Just out of curiosity. United, and I hear that's one of the horror shows in, in Newark right now. Is United? So we're gonna. So we, it's a big concern for us because we have our booth. We have to be there. I mean, it's gonna start whether we show up or not, or whether we get there or not. So we're, and that's what we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. You know, crossed. it's crazy because over the winter, um, this year I rented an apartment in uh, Boca, and I went down like once a month for a week. And I, there were like two or three times where we took off early from uh, West Palm. We landed 20 minutes early in Newark, and we waited two hours on the runway for a gate to open up. Yeah. It, was, it was a horror show. I mean, it's the, it's the most frustrating thing in the world, mm -hmm. you know, to, to land and you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I hate travel days to begin with. Uh, my wife will tell you, I'm always complaining. Just the headache of, a, of an airport in general. And now I'm looking for, not looking forward to Friday with, with this. Well, what do they say the main reason? I mean, why all of a sudden is it le less pilots or yeah, that's a great air question. traffic controller? I think it's a less pilot thing. I think a lot of people over COVID when they reduced kind of staff, a lot of people retired. And now they're trying to get more people into it. I know, uh, you know, one of my fraternity brothers, he just transitioned from the Air Force to flying for United. Um, so, you know, they're trying to recruit more pilots now. Yeah, yeah, actually, Nick and I were talking about this at his cigar lounge the other day when I was there. Uh, you, like a pilot, you can't just say, all right, I'm going to be a pilot tomorrow. Let me, let me go into to aviation. Like, it takes years and years before you can get, you know, in the cockpit of a plane, a, especially a commercial plane. So that's why the problem, I think, is, is going to be huge because you can't solve it overnight. Yeah, well, but was, was, was there ever a problem with, with pilot? Like, was there a shortage yeah. of pilots? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I didn't hear well, anything. Well, I think yeah, what happened was know. COVID hit, nobody was flying anywhere, and they still had all these guys on the payroll, and guys and gals on the payroll, and anybody who was close to retirement negotiated maybe, a retirement. Maybe they offered them an early retirement. Yeah, and because not, not they were going bankrupt, paying people who weren't flying. 
Yeah, but they they probably got PP, you know, the money, yeah, the yeah, government. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's funny. Even with air traffic controllers, same thing. They must have laid a lot of these guys off. Yeah. What'd they do? Pick another industry? I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, because those guys are paid well. Why would you not want to go back? Yeah. And it's a specialized job. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's funny because I was talking, actually, I was uh, uh, at l the other day. And I was talking to a guy I haven't seen in two years because of COVID. He hasn't come in. And he's an accountant. And he's telling me that for one year, they've been trying to fill an accountant position. They can't get anybody. And, and, and these I, are professional jobs. All right, I said to myself, yeah. you got to be kidding me. I mean, it's really amazing that because, you know, people aren't on, uh, you know, they're done getting the money from the, from mm. the government. Uh, so I don't understand what people it's, are doing. Uh, yeah, how are they paying their bills? Because uh, yeah. with the inflation, prices of groceries are through the roof. Everything's through the roof. How are they paying their bills? Yeah. yeah. Well, three was, we everybody wants to be an influencer, maybe. I they want three to be weeks ago, I was at, uh, what airport was it? Atlantic City. I was coming back from... Which is a good airport to fly into, yeah, typically. Yeah, it's so, it's so tiny, you know, right. it's not a lot of people. And I was flying in from Miami, and they postponed the flight. They delayed it because they were short of three stewardess. Mm. No kidding. Yeah. And we had to wait four hours. Great. And that was a prestigious job. People love to be flight attendants yeah. years yeah. ago and pilots. And these so are that it doesn't seem to me like that problem gets solved quickly. I no, mean, not at all. No, we had to wait for the next flight to come in. Whoever the stewardess said okay, we'll do it to take the flight. Yeah. So I guess back when COVID was in mainstream, there were less people flying, so they could get away with a shorter mm -hmm. staff. Now that we're back to Did the pre-pandemic level. They don't have enough people. It, yeah. It's really. Did they think we weren't going to get back to this, this well, level? People, I know. people changed the industries. You know, I was in marketing and we were working during COVID. And, uh, you know, one of the women we were working with quit. She was a, a statistician. She quit to uh, do online tarot card readings from home. <laughs> really? Because she was making that much money doing online tarot card readings at night that she was like, why would I put up with this all day? You know? When I can just, when I want, do a reading for somebody. Online. I can't imagine that you can make a lot of money doing online tarot cards. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. She was making enough that she said, screw it to a, a corporate gig. So, yeah. Wow. People are finding unique and interesting ways to make a living these days. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, no, yeah. I mean, look, the people definitely have shifted during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what they want to do. But it really is amazing, though, that the airline, because the airline thing, is such a mainstream problem. Sure. And you know, it's for people that, like for you, you're going to uh, the trade show. The trade the show. Days. You have to be there at a certain time. I mean, so I mean, it's, it's going to start whether we show up or not. Whether well, we get but there or not. I mean, I wonder if That's, someone in your position, do you plan to go maybe a day uh, earlier just as a safety valve, yeah. so you're there? Yeah, that's what we're doing. It start. It starts Saturday, yeah. so it's giving us a few hours. You know, so you give yourself a, a little. I, I guess a day. Maybe we should have did it earlier. I, I don't know. I'm hoping. Yeah, pretty much. We're going back to taking the train. Let's see. Yeah, I know. Maybe. <laughs> so we, we, we have uh, we had this uh, this I think the last week or two this Demarius Thomas uh, mm -hmm. who was a football player for the Broncos he passed away from CTE. Um, you know I don't know if you guys are football guys or whatever but you know this problem has really come out uh, with the NFL. I mean I know the NFL. They really made some, you know, what I would say, pretty progressive rule changes uh, to try to protect the players. But it, it seems like it, it, it's a pandemic in itself mm. about how these guys are getting hurt. You know, it's funny because at the golf club I belong, uh, the owner of the Vikings is a member, and he brought in a Viking helmet that we leave in the pro shop. And I went over and picked it up one day, and I'm telling you right now, it is amazing how heavy these helmets are. Mm. I mean, I'm talking, I mean, seriously. And when the thought about someone putting his helmet on and running and, you know, mm. going into somebody, it's really amazing. I mean, you know, what do you think can be done? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? My understanding is the damage occurs from your brain bouncing off the inside of your skull. So you could have the world's biggest helmet on, you know, that you want. But when you're running and you're stopped abruptly, your brain is sitting in fluid, it keeps moving, it bounces off the inside of your head. So, I mean, there's nothing they can do with a helmet to stop that. You know, so it's gonna keep happening, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there yeah. is an answer. It's, it's a contact sport. I mean, yeah. these guys are getting bigger and stronger every year. And, and that's a, I mean, that's like a truck sometimes yep. just running right into you. It's, 
Yeah, and I don't, you know, I don't know how they fix it. They've made, you know, they've made changes with protecting the quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved the kick returns up, so there's less kick returns. No head-to-head -head contact. Yeah, no, you know. Head. But, yeah, yeah, right. But, you know, in, in fact, when I watch that, I'm a big NFL guy. I mean, a, a lot of times the protection on a quarterback is almost like ridiculous now. Yeah. Uh, because, the, you know, every single play is major head-to-head -head contact. Mm -hmm. Like, I know my kids play ice hockey, which is a pretty, vol vo you know, violent sport in itself. However, it's not every play. You know, yeah. there's times where you're not getting hit. Yeah. But football, you're getting hit every single time. That's what I was. A running back's career is only a few years for most running like backs. Two and a half. Yeah. yeah I mean, no, no, that's that, that stat is really interesting. I yeah, never. Just, I think no, no. I think it's actually three or four years. I think it's two and a half. For Maybe. A running back. Yeah. It, it's un when I heard that, Maybe I couldn't it believe it. All, all game, you're just getting pummeled all game. Yeah. The average career of just an NFL player is like three or four years. And trying to get through a defensive line, those guys are some of the offense and defensive line those are the biggest they're guys huge. on yeah. the team they're huge and now those guys run a within 10 yards they run just as fast as a running back yeah you know yeah, they know what they're getting into though yeah, and they, they start and they're getting paid for it a lot right? they're getting paid for it, but yeah you know and a lot of these guys you know that that's their ticket mm -hmm. okay to, to make money but you know it, it you wonder what can the nfl do yeah to protect these guys or help them once they get out of the uh, and, NFL. I mean, it's also physiology too, right? Like, just like in boxing, like some guys have a glass jaw, they get hit, they go down. Other guys play a 15 year NFL career and don't have CTE. Yeah. Some guys pay for four years and do have CTE, so. Look at Eli Manning when he was starting oh, yeah. quarterback for the Giants. He, he wasn't on the injured list in his Ever. career. No, no, he never. Never I'm a career. huge Giant fan. Yeah. Eli did not miss a game in until his career. Him, and they, oh, the until one game they, they sat him. him out. Yeah. They sat him. For they no sat reason. him, yeah. Right, no but he did not. Th that to me no injuries. is an amazing, well, I think 14 years, mm -hmm. not, you know, never missed a game. Yeah. Which, which is really amazing. Yeah. And, the, and, and the, this, the, this problem, I don't think it's really hurting football because more and more kids want to play it. You know? Well, no, I do think that youth, youth football is... Uh, has, has diminished somewhat. Yeah. yeah well, parents are more aware. They don't let kids start as early. But I mean, I so just, soccer is soccer is yeah. kind of taken over. You're right. So yeah. Soccer is huge now. Lacrosse, but soccer, yeah, soccer, when you think about it, with the heading, the, the, heading. The, 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 the ball. I mean that. That's pretty rough. It's not every yeah. play. Yeah, but and, how and I know in happen? rec soccer they don't allow it. So my daughters are playing rec soccer. They wouldn't allow you to use your head until you got to, like to the high school level. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I never weren't allowed to. Yeah, that's that's. Well, you know, it's funny new. because when you really think about it. So my dad, unfortunately, he fell and hit his head, and he passed away because he had a brain bleed. Um, but when I was in the hospital, when he was in the hospital, it was amazing how many people were in the hospital with head injuries. Now, granted, they weren't wearing a helmet, but when you think about Every single play, mm -hmm. these big guys banging each other, mm -hmm. and you're right, Nick. I mean, you know, you have the helmet on, but you're still yeah. there's compression on this. And that helmet's hitting there's, your head. Yeah. There's nothing they're going to be able to do. No, there's nothing. I mean, I did pro yes. wrestling for 12 years. I knew what I was getting into. If I landed on my head, I landed on my head. Yeah. I knew what I signed up for. Yeah, right. You know, well, football. Yeah. You have a helmet. What are they going to do? Add more pad? They right. can't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what are they going to do? It's tough. Yeah. yeah, I know they're already walking with like yeah. all this. Yeah, all the <laughs> yeah. It's, there's nothing they can do. Yeah. So we're here at the, the Perfect Dash in Colts Neck. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rich LeBlaze, owner of the Perfect Dash. What we do here is we supply our humidor with premium cigars as well as boutique cigars. What we pride ourselves on is making the customer happy. We want our customers to enjoy the experience of being here and being in the lounge. And that's what a lounge is all about. That's why you should come. Enjoy yourself and relax with friends and family. What are you smoking? The perfect dash. In this new day and age of online meetings and presentations, you need the best team at the ready. Whether broadcasting your Zoom meetings to Facebook Live or live streaming a fundraiser event, Surreal Streaming Services, with over 10 years of experience, can add confidence to your next live stream event. Call or text 646 498 8888 or visit sir real.com. MRD Productions is a full service digital media company dedicated to creating and producing content with purpose. If you or your company are looking to create a video or commercial that pops, produce a show or podcast of your own, call 718-216-6403. 
or email info at mrdproductionsllc.com. Welcome back to Shades of Havana. My name is David Zimmel. I'm the host um, of Shades. We're at the Perfect Ash in Colts Neck. We're here with Mike Mazza, George Manzetta, and uh, Nick Foster, my co-host. Um, so we were uh, we were just talking before um, in Florida. Apparently, if you're a teacher, you have to declare uh, what your political affiliation is. Um, and you had mentioned, which is amazing, that you were a teacher mm-hmm. and you were fired because, well, why don't you tell the story? Uh, so I was a teacher's aide for 12 years for Ocean Township and Long Branch. And when I was with Ocean, that was the last school district I was with, they fired me because of my stand-up comedy and because I'm an actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was holding a prop gun in a picture. They saw it, they're like, oh, you're holding a gun. I was like, okay. They're like, well, you can't do that. And then my comedy, they're like, it's too dirty. You can't be doing comedy like that when you work with kids. Hmm. And they fired me. That's, that's really interesting. That's, I, mean, I did stand yeah. up, but I was doing marketing, so I guess they didn't care. <laughs> well, see, the, the crazy thing is, too, I had parents coming to my shows, yeah. and they loved it. They're like, oh, when's your next show? Yeah. Look at that line of demarcation, like when you're doing comedy, like, like it, you're there to do comedy. Like you yeah. almost expressly sign off on something without signing off on something when you walk in. You're saying, I'm here to have a good time. I'm not going to take any of this yeah, seriously. Pur- yeah. Purpose like, is to laugh. It, right? The purpose is so to laugh, laugh, you know? Yeah, and exactly. those are the most So what, what, what exactly things. happened? I mean, did somebody see your show and they approached you? I, I really don't know. I don't know if someone saw my Instagram, my Facebook. Yeah. All I know is that they called me in and they were like, your comedy is too dirty. You can't be doing that when you work with kids. And you were holding a gun in this picture. Yeah. And I was like, well, clearly you could see I'm on set. There's cameras, there's lights. Mm-hmm. It says actor's life yeah. at the bottom of the picture. Yeah. And they're like, well, you can't do that. And I was like, well, you're, you're going to say if a teacher's a hunter, they can't post a picture with a deer? Yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense. Now, did yeah. they give you the option to stop doing that? Or they just no. said, that's it, you're done? Really? No, they said I'm done. Wow. wow. That I could resign. Well, if you were fine. tenured. Yeah, well, I was a teacher's aide, so we didn't get tenure. Ah, but if, yeah, I was saying it was the other way around. If you're full-time How many tenured. years well, were, you doing, were you doing this whereby they, you know... My career as a teacher's aide, a total of 12 years. Wow. Mm. Yeah, so I had a pension, benefits, all gone. Wow. Wow. And no yeah. union, right? No. They, they, they tried saying they helped, but it wasn't really anything. Yeah. Like, I could tell in the, in the meeting that he wasn't Great. doing anything. Yeah. You could tell which way it was going. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew right away. I was like, you're not even helping me out. So, that's what happened. Yeah, mm. it's, that's, it's terrible. It's, that's yeah. very interesting. It's, it's crazy So, um, what about... Um, we had President Biden the other day fell off his bike <clears throat> and someone, you know, filmed it and, you know, it hit uh, social media. Um, you know, today with social media, you know, you can live stream, you know, any, anything you want and, and put it on the Internet. I mean, what, are you, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, social media right now can really make or break careers, relationships. Mm-hmm lives you know it's unbelievable and it's social media is really con- it's controlling america right now you know if, if a lot of things that are put out there if it doesn't fit mm-hmm. the narrative they can either censor it shut it off lose a job I mean, it's uh someone, it's, so, it's you know, what's interesting is someone can you know be held accountable that they can't go on and talk about their politics and their views but someone can take a, a video and live stream anything that they see and post it, it's, it's, it's crazy. I think it's an overall yeah. degradation of our ability to process empirical evidence. You know what I mean? We've all fallen off a bike. You know what I mean? Maybe you hit a rock, maybe, I don't know. You're like, the guy's in his 70s, of course he fell off a bike. You know, you put your average 70 year old on a bike, they're falling off. Well, I think he was wearing mm. uh, clip on shoes. Oh, you see, they, yeah, yeah. those are always, those are always <laughs> yeah, hanging yeah, That happened to me, by the way. That's his was, first uh, mistake. Yeah. You get hung up in the, yeah. in the pedals. Yeah, but we but could all say something's the, wrong with him, though. Yeah, like, but something's I'm, wrong And when there. you're the president, you're in the spotlight. Yeah. So anything you do. But is, I'm just saying, our inability to process evidence and look at things individually and, you know, look at something that somebody did online, like your, your, your situation, and say, oh, well, you know. That shouldn't matter, right? There's this like hive mind thing that says, well, now that's bad or now that's whatever. And, and that then it just is what it is. And, you know, it's almost as if they don't trust us to like come up with our own conclusions on what we see. You know, it's like it's all going to be curated and it all goes out on a certain feed and somebody does a voiceover on it or, you know, it's just 
we should be able to look at things and just make our own decisions. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, when you really think about like 25 years ago, none of these things would be ever be seen no. by anybody. No. no. Just maybe, maybe five people that right. saw it. These things it's happened. It. It's not like they didn't happen. I know. But no one would ever see it. But Go today, ahead. it amazes me that when you watch the news every day, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's truly uh, amazing what is actually videoed. I mean, yeah. they get everything. Yeah. Well, because everybody has a camera with yeah. them now yeah. at all times. So right. the camera on your phone. You ever listen well, to Lyndon well, Johnson talk? You ever listen to the Lyndon Johnson tapes? There's, he says stuff that'll curl your toes, you know, but it came out in his archives after the man was dead, you know, so. And, yeah. and years ago, people didn't walk around with a camcorder, yeah. you know, yep. every minute of, of their lives. Their so so you, have a, you have a camcorder now with you 24 hours a day. Ooh, let me film that. And, yeah. and everybody wants their five minutes of fame, so they'll put it on social media, and then the public has their opinion on it, and... Yeah, even, yeah. you know, in the Chicago thing that just happened, which is, which is terrible, look, the, the footage that they were able to get. The Highland Park? Yeah, Highland yeah. Park. The footage that they got, everyone's filming it. I mean, yeah. they, mm -hmm. they saw everything. So I guess in a way that could help police, but also it, it, it hurts police and hurts yeah. a lot of things too. Because now we have, all right, you have the, the whole event on tape. Let's look at it, but... It's yeah. a, lot, a lot of negative kind of things. Well, they caught, they caught that guy, so. Yeah, so. Yeah. And, and, and how they caught the guy was amazing. I mean, the guy dressed up like a woman mm -hmm. to try to escape, and they still caught him. And they caught him pretty quick, too. Yeah. Which is. So uh, clearly that was planned if he had a whole costume. Oh, no, they say. Oh, yeah. He had a whole like, costume and everything ready. He was a very, he's a very strange cat. He's a very strange guy. You know, uh, son of a local politician, but like really weird. And one picture on he has on social media, he's got pink. Uh, pigtails and goggles on, and he's just a strange ranger, that guy. No, but you know that's the the, the whole thing with the internet is that it, it's it's good for a lot of things and it's terrible for a lot mm. of things. Sure. You know, there's there's nothing you know that's hidden anymore. No, you can't get away with anything. No, 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 no privacy. Yeah, no privacy. Right. That's why we, we sit down, relax, stay out of trouble. <laughs> I did some landscaping this morning. I planted some plants. All good, clean fun right, right there. It's all good. Tell, this is our distressor right here. All my friends, I always tell them I could do without a cell phone. Yeah. Take me back to when I was a teenager. There was no cell phones. Oh yeah. Well, you're right. I remember. I'm a, I'm in sales. I would be driving down the Parkway. And couldn't wait to get to the Raron and Toll Plaza so I can drive through. And they had. So, uh, you know, pay phones, you know, yeah. where you pull up and make a call. Yep. Sure, yeah, you pull yeah. up. At least I had peace and quiet in the car. So you could respond to all the beeper, beeper calls. <laughs> well, that, I never had a beeper, but there were, you know, there were people that, that did have beepers. But anyway, we're at um, Perfect Ash and Cold Snack. Uh, I want to thank uh, George and Mike and uh, Nick for participating. Uh, good uh, subject matter. And um, I want to just know, what are you smoking? Shades of Havana with your host David Zimmel and special guest host Nick Foster, George Manzella and Mike Mazza, directed by Rod Weber, created by Michael R. Doyle and Rod Weber, producers David Zimmel and Erwin Sternberg, executive producers Michael R. Doyle and Sean M. Sternberg, co-producers Steve Zimke and John P. Doyle, camera and sound Mark Manassi and Sean Duenas, editor Steve Zimke. And special thanks to Rich DeBlaze for hosting us at The Perfect Ash in Colts Neck, New Jersey. Shades of Havana was brought to you by Surreal, sir-real.com for all your streaming service solutions or call 646-498-8888. Our sponsors' websites and phone numbers are also provided in the show notes. When you visit our sponsors, you're helping them and helping our show. And if you enjoy Shades of Havana, we hope you tell your friends and give us a great rating wherever you get your podcasts. All opinions expressed by the Shades of Havana participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Shades of Havana, Inc., a subsidiary of MRD Productions, LLC. Shades of Havana is an MRD production.